The beginning is a very delicate time. But who cares about that? Let's talk about Doom. Well, Doom 3, the most divisive Doom game, and I can understand why. This was the first Doom game since Doom 64 in 1997. Doom 64 was already somewhat divisive due to the more moody atmosphere and the ambient music. It was pretty good, but I didn't make a video about it, because there's not much new to say about it. It does feel like a middle ground between the classic Dooms and Doom 3 if you play the games in order, though. Doom 3 still feels jarringly different from all the other Dooms, that going for a more survival horror playstyle. Even the logo abandoned the Roman numerals used in Doom 2 for a traditional 3. Production on Doom 3 started after id Software's remake of Wolfenstein 3D on modern software. John Carmack wanted to make a remake of Doom, which was originally going to be a much bigger game, but the technology wasn't advanced enough yet. But now, in 2001, the technology was ready. Many people at id wanted to start working on new franchises and games, believing that going back to old franchises over and over again wasn't going to work in the long term. Many of the guys at id either left or were fired, with production for Doom 3 finally beginning on a bit of a sour note. The game was first presented in 2001, at the Macworld conference in Tokyo. The engine was very impressive for the time, and it still holds up rather well in 2024. The game was released on August 3rd, 2004, but does it deserve its strange reputation? Well, let's see. Before we start, I'm going to be playing the original version of Doom 3, not the BFG edition. If you ever intend to play this game, you will need console commands to play in widescreen. The commands are R underscore 1, R underscore aspect ratio value, R underscore custom height 1080, R underscore custom width 1920, and vid underscore restart. You'll have to replace the numbers with the resolution of your monitor. Also, when you play in widescreen, the aiming reticle will be stretched into an oval. You'll get used to it after a while, it's just a little weird at first. Well, here's the title screen. There's a pretty awesome theme song by Tweaker, and the logo I talked about earlier. So we start a new game and get a pretty generic opening cutscene. This wasn't new to video games, but it's new for Doom. If you're looking for someone to help you, just head to reception. Whoa, is that... is that an NPC? Again, not new for video games, but new for Doom. Ooh, screens, how do these... Whoa! These screen mechanics are awesome. They're used throughout the game, instead of the switches and levers of the classic games. We do a bit of exploring, and then we go to the check-in desk. Welcome to Mars. First time? You can just leave your bag there. I'll have it sent up your quarters. Okay, there's a few things we need to take care of first. This is your personal data assistant. You'll need this to access all secure areas. If you get clearance for any security zones, it'll download directly. This is the PDA. Yeah, the 22nd century PDAs, not smartphones. All jokes aside, this thing is pretty neat. As the game goes on, you can find more PDAs with other people's emails on them. Reminds me a bit of Deus Ex. We get to explore Mars City, which is actually a pretty good setting for the first bit of this game, with an incredible arcade game that will become a second life. Super, Super Turbo, Turbo Turkey Puncher 3 is absolutely awesome. We go meet Sarge, who sends us off to find a scientist. Follow this little sentry bot to an elevator, and we go down and are supplied with our armor, pistol, and the flashlight. I know the flashlight is one of the most divisive elements of the game, but we'll get to that soon. See these guys who we heard about earlier interrogating this doctor. They simply can't handle life here. They're exhausted and overworked. If I had a larger, more competent staff and bigger budget, even these few accidents could have been avoided. He's the villain, isn't he? We find the scientist who says, The devil is real. I know. I built his cage. I'm getting abnormal. Then there's these flying skulls that fly into Mr. Science Man and- Oh no, are you okay? Well, Mr. Science Man is dead, which really sucks. I was hoping we could get a friendship going. Well, now there's sounds in the walls and evil dudes with guns. I think that the flying ghost skulls are possessing everyone, but I'm not really sure. Oh, here are some tubes. Nothing bad can happen here. My gosh, what is- Oh, it's an imp. They're pretty neat in this one. They aren't particularly scary though, especially when they try to jump scare you. The design is also interesting. I'll get to the designs of the enemies later. Pretty easy to kill with the shotgun, which is not as good as it was in the classics. But it's still good enough. Just feels a little mushy. Oh, the bathroom. Nice. Oh 
Okay, I don't need to go anymore. Better check the toilet. My gosh, why is there a lemon there? Let's see what else is to this game. Well, there's the maggots, who are just imps without fireballs, which is a weird choice. That they're like the gunless zombies, but they crawl and are fast. They lack in variety, they make up for in Fear Factor. These things mark when the game actually becomes a bit scary. For this part, the game was close enough to being horror, but wasn't quite scary enough to be considered a horror game. Around this point, the atmosphere improves quite a bit. Also, the pinkies back, and they look like trash. These things did look silly in the first game, but now they look like some kind of robotic flesh bear. Some of these enemy designs look terrible, like the Lossals, which are shrunk down to be the size of normal heads. They're just normal heads with skin and stuff. Also, you might be wondering about if the Spider Masterminds redesign looks good. Well, guess what? It's not even here! Instead, we have small spiders that aren't even real! They're just heads with legs! Guess there is a spider boss that uses telekinesis, which is supposed to be a big deal, but it's super easy and pretty underwhelming. Oh hey, it's a Caco Demon. That's it? Yep. The big icon of the Doom franchise is just sitting out here. I absolutely hate this design. The reason they're so famous is because they look like a hybrid of a meatball and a raspberry with a Cyclops face. Now they look like the redesign of your favorite character for the gritty live-action remake. Anyway, this is my headcanon for the Cacodemon evolution. Oh nice, a new enemy. It's just a maggot that can teleport. Not much to say about it. I do like how you can hear its footsteps while it's teleporting around. While this game is supposed to be survival horror based, so you're probably wondering if it actually scares me. It does sometimes, but it usually tries to scare you in cheap ways. The flashlight is a very controversial element of the game design, since you aren't able to use a weapon and the flashlight at the same time. Honestly, I don't see much of a problem with this. This mechanic can be scary sometimes, but the game usually resorts to cheap jump scares because that's scary! The only times I was actually scared were when I heard a new enemy around the corner, only for there to be nothing there. The other times I was scared was when the screen turned red and parts of the area started breaking. How about the story? Up to this point, you've been told the story as a bit of a bystander, with your character finding things out by eavesdropping on this counselor guy and this bad guy laughing at you while you go on your adventure. Around this point, though, you go on a mission to send a message to Earth, telling them to send reinforcements to Mars. Sarge keeps telling you to do this, and the counselor tells you not to. You end up sending the message, and Betruger, who happens to have one of the most generic villain designs of all time, tells you you're very dumb and that now he can bring the demon invasion to Earth. And around this part, a bunch of new enemies are introduced. The Revenant is back. He's just as cool as he was in Doom 2. It's also nice that this is a design I actually recognize, although now he has translucent skin, it actually looks pretty cool. The Mancubus also shows up here, and he now has this tentacle face, which also looks pretty cool. The Commandos also show up here, and these things also suck. They either have chain guns or whip arms, both variants are really annoying. The Lost Souls also show up here, and they're just weird in this one. At least they're not on steroids like they were in Doom 64. Now we get to the Delta Labs and find out about the Soul Cube. It's a huge plot device, but its introduction is very abrupt. And we get to some teleporting puzzles and the Archviles, who are just as annoying as they were in Doom 2. Then Betruger, being an intelligent villain, sends some tall dudes at us and sends us to hell to retrieve the plot device. And my one main complaint up to this point, that this game didn't feel like Doom, is finally fixed. The flashlight is gone, your, sm your sprint bar is gone, and mass demon slang is back. I love this part. You get put in a cage and then you break out and go on a rampage. The colors are awesome, finally looking like a proper reimagining of the classic dooms. There are plenty of locations to remember here, and a bunch of encounters with these tall guys or hell knights. I find it odd that they used hell knights instead of the barons, but hey, these things are still awesome. If you do enough searching, you can even find the BFG, which has a really cool design in this one. And you get to a boss fight. It fires these little bugs out of its back, you need to shoot down. When they die, you shoot in the back, and when it dies, you get the soul cube. It's not just a plot device, it's a weapon. It gets charged by enemies' souls, and when it's charged, it tells you... <laughs> then you shoot at an enemy you want to kill. It's super useful for archviles. You go back to Mars, and you get told by the counselor who's dying to go kill Sarge, because he's evil now. There's a lot of build-up to the fight, and it's pretty tough. Then we get to the Sarge fight, and he's a tank! It's not as good as the Guardian fight, but it's still pretty good. After defeating him, you get the BFG for the rest of the game. 
Then you go cave exploring for a really, really long time. You get to see a bunch of lore tablets, which are pretty cool. Okay, now we go down here, and then we go down here. Now there's a sarcophagus and some lore. It doesn't have much correlation to the rest of the story, other than Doom Guy holding the Soul Cube. Then we walk outside, and we see the Cyber Demon. It's got a really neat design, and the fight sucks. You can't damage the Cyber Demon, so you kill other enemies to charge the Soul Cube, and you throw it at the Cyber Demon four times, and it dies. What? That's it? That was silly. Well, now we can go kill the true group. Whoa, cool cutscene. What do you mean that's it? The game's done? Why was the Cyber Demon the final boss? Why didn't Petruger turn into the Cyber Demon? What? Why? The ending music is cool though. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. And if you hated this video, please log off of the MSNBC website. Bye.